ready to go? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Driscoll, Chief Operating Officer at Math for America, a STEM education nonprofit that runs a nationally recognized fellowship program for public, STEM, public school STEM teachers in New York City. At MFA, our goal is to change the way we think about teaching by trusting teachers to drive innovation from their classrooms. For a long time at MFA, we've admired Governor Murphy's uh, strong commitment to supporting teachers and preparing students with the skills that they need to thrive in STEM subjects, which are so central to our economy and our democracy in the 21st century. We are delighted to learn, about a year and a half ago now, that he supported building a program based on Math for America in New Jersey. So to do this, we partnered with three leading universities across the state, Montclair State University in the north, Princeton University centrally, and Rowan University in the south. And we created a program called the New Jersey STEM Innovation Fellowship. We decided to focus the pilot on improving elementary math instruction, and we received five applications for every available space. In the end, we selected 30 outstanding educators that you see here today. They're up here in the front. And they represent 29 schools and 20 districts across the state. These fellowships will participate in the program in the coming year, and they'll receive a $5,000 stipend. The teachers are spending today and tomorrow exploring an innovative math teaching practice shown to develop 21st century problem solving skills and improve student learning outcomes. They're learning from Dr. Kathy Fosno, a nationally renowned expert in elementary math education. During the school year that follows, they're gonna implement this innovative teaching practice in their classrooms and collaborate locally and at university campuses and statewide through an online platform. They're gonna open their classrooms to their colleagues and peers and begin to grow a learning community statewide dedicated to innovation that improves student achievement. None of this would be possible without support from our key stakeholders, including, of course, the Murphy administration, our three university partners, the New Jersey Department of Education, the New Jersey Education Association, School Boards Association, and Principals and Superintendents Association, and finally, Jersey Can, an advocacy group that supports equitable access to STEM education for students. Nor would it be possible without funding from organizations with a strong commitment to STEM education in New Jersey, including the Overdeck Family Foundation, and Laura Overdeck is here today, PSEG, Celgene Corporation, Becton Dickinson and Company, BD for short, and the Mar Charitable Foundation, and also ADP Foundation. Jamar Tyndale is also here from PSEG today. And finally, we owe a very special thanks to Dr. Susan Cole, president of Montclair State University. When we approached President Cole to gauge her interest, she agreed without hesitation, not only to participate, but to lead this partnership. We couldn't ask for anything more from a nationally recognized uh, university, especially in math teacher education and teacher preparation. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here and to see the New Jersey STEM Innovation and Fellowship Program really take out, take off the ground. Uh, I know there are a couple of people who are spending a couple of days here, uh, immersed in mathematics and math education. Uh, and I think it is absolutely a terrific program. I'm immensely grateful to the funders of this program. Um, I have to, I want to say um, a, a word uh, about uh, mathematics. Uh, I love mathematics. I, re I really do. Uh, it is, I was an English major, but I'm going to tell you why. I was an English major because in high school I loved language and I loved literature and I also loved mathematics. I loved mathematics and I was very good at mathematics. Until my junior year when I signed up uh, for the pre-calculus class in my public high school in New York City and I was called into the dean of students office and he said to me in effect, what the hell do you think you're doing? And I said, what do you mean? He said, you can't take pre-calculus. I said, why not? Why not? He said, because we need those seats for the boys. And that was the end of it. That was absolutely the end of my math career. Happened to you too, right? It happened to a lot of girls. Um, but why did I love mathematics? Because it's a language. 
It's a language. It is a way of thinking about the world. It is a way of articulating the world. And if young students can understand it as that kind of language, as a way in which they think about things differently and are able to approach problems differently, they will love it in the same way they will love the written and spoken language that they use every day. We just have to make sure that everyone has access to this language. If you don't have access to the language of mathematics, what you can do in life is severely limited. It is severely limited. I think of students who come into this university and I can make a long list of majors they cannot study, they cannot complete because they don't have enough mathematics. And so they are closed off from all of those opportunities in life. I love mathematics and I believe from the bottom of my heart that American kids can learn mathematics just like kids all over the world. That there's nothing wrong with our kids' brains. They can learn mathematics. We need to teach it. That's the issue. We need to teach it. We need to excite young people about it. So um, it is really um, a great pleasure to me to thank the funders of this program. And it is a great pleasure to me to thank some of the supporters of this university that make it possible for us to participate in uh, these kinds of programs. And there are two amazing supporters sitting right over there to the left of the governor. Uh, Senator, uh, Assemblyman Giblin has been a supporter of this institution. <laughs> Something and Giblin has been a supporter of this institution for many, many years. When we need his help, he is there. He collaborates with us in all kinds of ways, and it is always an honor to have him in the house. One of the newer, incredibly bright lights on the legislative scene is Assemblywoman Brittany Timberlake a powerhouse, a powerhouse. And when I went to Assemblywoman Timberlake and said, we need your help, she said, tell me the story. I told her the story and she was like a tigress. She was like a tigress. Was she not governor? Yes. <laughs> she was and she is. And I'm immensely grateful to her. She is a bulwark. Uh, for people, for education. And there's a third person in the room who it is now my privilege to introduce, uh, Governor Phil Murphy. So I can say about Governor Phil Murphy that he is a man of languages. He is. He claims not to have math as a language, but I don't believe it for a minute. Remember, he did pretty well at Goldman Sachs. And I got a feeling you got to be able to add two plus two to do pretty well at Goldman Sachs. Am I wrong? I did okay. You did okay. <laughs> okay. He is a man of languages, uh, both spoken languages and the language of, of mathematics as well. But even more to the point in his current role, he is a man of action. He has been busy in Trenton. And the heart of what he has been busy with is leveling the playing field for everybody. He has been busy with programs that will support people notwithstanding gender, notwithstanding racial and ethnic differences, notwithstanding the economic circumstances of their family, leveling the playing field so that everybody has access to the kinds of programs that they need, to the kinds of education that they need in order to fulfill themselves and contribute to society. 
That's the kind of governor he is, and it is a, an immense privilege and an honor to have him here on the campus today, Governor Phil Murphy. I'm sitting there thinking, what can I possibly say to live up to that introduction? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, like, Good morning class. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. What a treat. It is an absolute thrill for me to join you this morning. Thank you, Susan. Begin with you for that extraordinarily gracious introduction. And more broadly, to you and to your whole team at Montclair State for not just being one of the host sites for this inaugural fellowship class, uh, but more broadly for your leadership both in the STEM economy and beyond. You have an extraordinary team at Montclair State. Uh, I want to give a particular shout out in addition to your leadership, which is now, am I, am I right in saying 21 years? 21 years? Yes. 21 years. Let's give it for Susan Cole here. Right. Um, she and I just had a private meeting. She said, by the way, I think you're my eighth governor. <laughs> Which had sort of the feeling that she would be here long after I'm gone. Um, <laughs> But it, it, her team is extraordinary. I want to just single out Dr. Laura Billings, who's the Dean of the College of Science and Math herself, an applied math person herself. So great to have you here as well. I'm also incredibly, as was also, um, as was also mentioned, I'm incredibly honored uh, to be joined by the two legislators. Uh, a guy who's been on the scene for a long time, a huge force in organized labor in addition to his uh, work as an assemblyman and as a leader, uh, Tom Giblin, and beside him, uh, a former freeholder, somebody who I met early, early moments when I was kicking the tires on running for governor. Now an extraordinary assemblywoman, Brittany Timberlake. One more time, can we get it up for each of them? Thank you. So I recognize that um, we are uh, on a that while your students are enjoying the last weeks of summer vacation, today is a school day, as it were, for you all, so I will not take up much of your time. Um, I, want to, I want you to get back to working alongside uh, your fellow educators and so, soaking up as many ideas as possible to pass along to your students, um, and as rightfully so. Uh, I'll, I, I will also want to thank, allow me to begin as well by thanking Math for America for leading the charge for creating this New Jersey STEM Innovation Fellowship Program. And, and Michael and I were together. He was reminding me in January, which I find hard to believe, so eight months ago, but Michael Driscoll, who's been an extraordinary leader, we were together for a computer science for all event. Uh, and it's a real treat to be with you again. Let's hear it again from Michael and his team at Math for America. And also reiterate uh, his thanks for the sponsors and Susan's as well. Uh, and they are the Overdeck Family Foundation. Laura, I see you out there. Nice to see you, a dear friend. I hope your summer's been good. Uh, PSE&G Foundation, Celgene Corporation, Becton Dickinson and Company, ADP Foundation, and the Mar Charitable Foundation for their financial support. One more time collectively for that group. Thank you all. And of course, as Michael mentioned, I want to also thank Princeton University and Rowan University, and again, our host today, Montclair State University, for opening their doors to this program. Suffice it to say, without this great partnership, the public, private, and nonprofit sectors working together, we wouldn't be here. And we're here at a critical time for our state. We're at a crossroad in education, where the classic three R's are being joined by four other letters, STEM. I don't need to tell any of you that the world your students will be entering in the next 12 to 15 years will be vastly different from the one you entered when you began your careers in public education, let alone the world that uh, my generation and I entered into the workforce nearly 40 years ago. The tool today students will need for success in tomorrow's economy are more complex than perhaps at any other time. Bringing forward new ideas in math, 
that can resonate with more students, allowing them to grasp complex ideas in simple ways and helping them love learning from an early age are all critical, not just for their success in school, but long beyond. When we ignite an interest in math, then we can make an open and shut argument to further investing not just in innovative education, but also in education in innovation. And we know that these efforts are even more vital for introducing girls and students of color to the possibilities in the STEM fields, which after all could use a lot more diversity. Take for example the fact, and we discussed this when we were together, Michael and Laura in January at that event, uh, the fact that only one quarter of our AP computer science test takers are female, and roughly one in seven is in an underrepresented uh, is an underrepresented minority student. This doesn't happen by accident. It happens by our own omission as a society from seeing that every student in every school, in every community, has the capability to do great things. And when it happens, it closes the door early on too many promising young people for the jobs of tomorrow. You are the educational leaders who will serve on the front lines of ensuring these doors always stay open. You are the first 30 of what we hope will be many more educator fellows to be equipped with innovative math teaching practices that will enhance student understanding of complex concepts. The love for STEM that you will be able to instill in your students will serve them long after they leave your classrooms. There are also concepts to not just be passed on to your students, but also your fellow educators so they can reach their own students. This fellowship creates a terrific teach it forward opportunity. And as your students move forward in their educations, and as you move forward in your own careers, we will have the programs to help both students and educators find expanded horizons. Creating such opportunities is at the heart of our administration's efforts to increase public school funding, more than a half a billion dollars in new classroom investments in just over our first two years and counting. Our goal is to ensure that you as educators have the resources needed to reach not most but every student. And we are taking other steps as well, as I mentioned, like Computer Science for All, an initiative we inaugurated in the last school year that gives more students access to a strong computer science curriculum in their own schools so they can prepare for good paying careers in the innovation economy. We invited school districts from across the state to apply for computer science for all grants to set up new computer science classes to create a diverse crop of new computer science students and to support faculty professional development. And then we followed that up by awarding 29 school districts a total of $2 million in grants to impact upwards of 900 students. Today at an event elsewhere on campus, and by the way, I mentioned I'm all Montclair State all the time this morning, as Susan has heard me say already. I've already given one set of remarks. Susan and I had a very good private meeting, and I'm thrilled to be here with you all today. But at another uh, address that I made earlier, I announced the opening of the application period for the New Jersey Department of Education's inaugural Expanding Pre-Apprenticeships in a New Direction, or EXPAND, grant program. This new program will provide opportunities to high school students to develop STEM and other skills as a first step toward entering an apprenticeship in an innovation-driven industry. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. Michael Aaron was my witness because I saw him there. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, we have the highest concentration in New Jersey of scientists and engineers per square mile of anywhere in the world, uh, the world. The challenge will be filling, if we get the innovation economy right, it'll be filling those middle skills, really good paying, strong, supporting benefits jobs uh, that you can build a real uh, a career around and have real security and prosperity for you and your family. That's where our shortage will be, which is why we're throwing as much as we are into the STEM field generally at all levels, but including, in this case, apprenticeships. So through comprehensive efforts to expand exposure to STEM education in our early learners and furthering that through computer science for all and expand grants 
in our high schools, we're aiming to put New Jersey on a course to producing, as I mentioned, the highly educated and highly skilled critical thinkers that we will need to make our state an undisputed global leader in the STEM fields and the innovation economy. What you are becoming part of is much bigger than your classrooms. It is becoming part of a movement that will fully recreate our workforce. And we can only also hope that one of the students whose mind is turned on to math through the ideas you will take back to your schools with you will in turn become an educator herself or himself and help teach the succeeding generation of STEM learners. This fellowship is about creating the New Jersey where opportunities and innovation blossom for all of our residents. It's about creating an educational culture that will continue to draw educators who want to work in an innovative and supportive atmosphere. It's about creating a workforce that will be a draw for innovative companies. It's about creating a state that will draw folks from around the world to come to live and work and where our young people will want to stay to build their careers and their families. This is what you are all a part of. We cannot build this future without you, without your love of education, your commitment to your students, and without the enthusiasm you will pass along to them and your fellow educators. I congratulate each and every one of you for taking the step to be a Math for America STEM Innovation Fellow. I reiterate my sincerest thanks to Math for America and all the sponsors and host universities for being part of this inaugural fellowship. I hope you enjoy the rest of your session here and the remaining days of summer, and I cannot wait to see all the good things that will happen in your classrooms in the months and years to come. Thank you all very much. I, I am uh, I'm being incredibly rude because I have to speak and leave, so I apologize in advance for that. Uh, to each and every one of you, I apologize. But I was asked if there are on-topic questions that relate to this topic. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to take them now for our friends in the press. Otherwise, we're going to reconvene outside and discuss things that have absolutely nothing to do with why we're here today. <laughs> Anybody got any? Listen, I, I, I would just say as a general matter, um, in uh, June, our unemployment rate hit 3.5%, which is the lowest, was the lowest on record. Um, in July, it went lower. It's 3.3%. Uh, so that's, that, those are good things. So um, uh, we're really proud of that accomplishment, but we also recognize there are a lot of winds blowing in Washington and around the world and there's a certain fragility, I think you all see this, so we're spiking no footballs. Uh, but but the, the contributors to that, that job reality uh, begin and end with education. From pre-K, which we're expanding right up through higher education, and including explicitly apprenticeships and fellowships, and a good dose of that educational emphasis is in the STEM field. Uh, obviously, any discrimination of any kind is completely and utterly unacceptable, so it's my hope that we have a job market in New Jersey, in the STEM economy and beyond, that works for everybody. Uh, and I don't, see, uh, I don't see this as an either-or set of choices. Uh, that, that we have long been the beacon of immigration around the world. I'm guided by the actual poem on the base of the Statue of Liberty, not the doctored one we heard about last week. Uh, that's the America that I know. That's the America that I believe in. That's the beacon. Uh, that this country has stood for in so many respects um, for centuries. And I don't see that this is an either or. Uh, I believe if we get it right in this economy, uh, this is a job market, particularly in the innovation space, that can work for everybody. And that's what we're committed to. Thank you all again so much for having me. And congratulations to each and every one of you. Have a great end of the summer. I'll see you in the school year.